Hello and welcome to part two of the build system series. In today's video, we're going to be working on getting the material of our objects to update based on a few different conditions, as well as getting them to snap to a grid as we place them in the world. So let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is we need to make a building script. So let's go over to our scripts, our build system scripts folder, and we'll right click, create a new script, call it building. And we can open this. So in this script, we're going to need to do a few different things. So we want to get a reference to our renderer. In this case, it's going to be the renderer of our cube object. Um, and that's so we can set stuff like its material. So we'll say private renderer, call this underscore renderer. And we also want to make a reference to our default material. So the one that we start with. So we can say underscore default. Sorry, under private material and say underscore default material. Now in our start function, we are going to with our renderer, we can say renderer equals a get component in children and turn our renderer. And we can say the material and we can say if renderer. So if it's not null and we found one. Then we can set our default material equal to our renderer.get to our renderer's material. And then we want to make a public void update material function, which is going to take in a reference to a material. So I'm going to say material new. So here we're going to say if the renderer.material is not equal to new material, then let's set the material new material and we also want a public void uh, method called place building and call this when we are you know placing the building and we can say renderer dot material is equal to default material like that and we can also create a private tool up here we're going to call this flagged or delete this will handle changing the material based on if we pointing at this object and we have said that we tend to de possibly delete it so we can say public void um flag for delete this will take in a material call this material and we can call our update material function passing in that delete mat and we can set flagged for delete equal true i'm just going to call Get rid of that capital F and put underscore F, keep our naming convention correct. Then I'm also going to make a public pool called flagged for delete, which is going to be a getter for our flagged for delete pool. So flagged for delete. And in our place building method here, uh, we're kind of doing what it says here. So let's just call our update material function and pass in default material. And here we are going to do a public void uh, remove delete flag, which doesn't need to take in any parameters. That's going to update material back to our default material and set the flagged for delete bool back to false. So now let's head back over to our build tool.cs function. We've got our build mode logic here. This is going to be how we can change the uh, game object to position. Uh, we can change its material based on whether we're hitting something or not. So whether we're looking at a valid uh, build spot. And to do that, instead of getting a reference to a game object called game object to position, I'm going to swap this over to be a building reference. And I'm going to rename this variable to spawned building. Pop this over to serialize field private. So we can set it in the inspector, but we're starting to get a bit stricter now with our code because we're going to use this now throughout. Um, we don't want to be able to change this kind of outside of the code base. Um, again, for now, we are going to set it in the inspector, but eventually we'll be spawning this building in through UI. And what we can do is in our build mode logic. So if it's null, we are returning. That's fine. 
And here we're saying if the ray isn't hitting something, then we're just going to return. But instead, what we want to do is we actually want to do something if we have a building, but it's not hitting something. What we want to do is call spawn building dot update material, and we can pass in um, the delete material building material negative. And if we are hitting something else, we're going to set the building's position to the hit info dot point. And we are going to call spawned building dot material state material and we can pass in the building material positive. Then here with our left mouse button uh, was pressed to the frame and save a reference to this building that we're instantiating. So we can say uh, building, call this uh, placed building. And we'll set that equal to this instantiation. So we're going to spawn it into the world and store a temporary reference to it. Then we can say placed building dot place building. And that's going to currently all that's going to do is update its material to the default material if it's not already set to that. Let's confirm this is working before we go and handle the delete mode logic because that's um, a little bit more involved. So let's go back over to Unity, make sure we're all saved. Now I'm going to go to this cubes that I've made and I'm going to get rid of them all apart from one. And to this, I'm going to right click, create an empty parent, and I'm going to rename this building. Let's add our building script to this empty. And then now this is going to look in its children for a renderer. So it's going to find this cube. It's going to get the mesh renderer. And then that's how we can change the material of the cube. And over in build tool, I'm going to drag in our building reference. And again, we'll do this all through UI. We won't actually be spawning these in dynamically. But for now, we can just drag it in from the world into our building. We're going to need some materials for this positive and negative. So go back to our assets folder and we can right click, create and click a folder called material. And in our material folder, we'll create material. We'll call this uh, building positive. And I'm just going to duplicate that, rename new one to building negative. We'll keep them simple. I'm just going to make this uh, out of debug mode first. And I'm going to make the building positive, we can make this. Uh, Blue. Um, surface type transparent and for the alpha we'll just reduce that slightly and we drag this on our cube just to see it so see that there's a bit of a transparent outline there that's great so let's do that and again the negative one transparent, make this uh, red, bring our alpha down slightly there. If you want to, we can add maybe a bit of emission just to make it look a bit nicer. We can drag in our set emission to true. Let's do that with this one as well. Pick our blue color. Up the intensity slightly. Now we've got our red material which is going to be our negative material. And we've got our blue material, which is our positive material. This could be green or any of the color that you want. I'm going to go for blue and red. And again, I'm going to undo that so it goes back to its default material. And I'm going to come over to our build tool. I'm going to drag in our negative material into the negative material slot and the positive to the positive. And if we hit play, you can see as we're placing this, it's blue. If we look up in the sky, we're not actually hitting something. So the um, position has gone red. And it's blue when we are looking. And if we left click to place, we have a bit of an issue here. So let's take a look at what's happening here. That was on the place building call. And it looks like we're not finding our default material. I have a feeling. Um, Star isn't getting called 
before we're calling the place building. I think what's happening here is we're calling place building directly when we instantiate it. So start isn't actually getting called. And in the final bit of this code, we're not actually going to be using the start um, functionality. So um, for now, I am going to leave it there, but I'm going to copy it into place building. So we're going to get the renderer um, when we actually place the building down. And if we go back over to Unity and hit play, good play. That is working. That was that first issue, but now obviously it's spawning in blue at the time. So it's thinking it, the blue is its um, default material. Uh, that's fine. That's a little bug that will get sorted when we actually implement the actual building system. It's because we're not spawning these in from prefabs. What we're doing is spawning them in just based on the cube that's already in the world. So here we've got this blue cube and when we left click we are instantiating this cube in its current state and then calling the place building function which is getting the default material of that cube. Um, hopefully that makes sense. Once we start using prefabs and spawnable scriptable objects to spawn these in they will have their default material set correctly um, but for now just know that this is a little bug that will get fixed in the future. So now we're in delete mode, but we can't tell if we're actually looking at something. So uh, let's just jump over to the code and we'll implement the uh, logic for deleting our item. So over in our delete method, our build tool, uh, in our delete mode logic um, method, we want to make a new variable do this above the delete mode logic uh, method do private building and we're going to call this target building actually no i'm going to put it up here so we've got our spawn building and target building so down in with this target building which i've just noticed has a capital uh, I've been doing a lot of work in Unreal Engine recently, and that's the kind of coding convention over there. It's all capital letters. There's none of this lowercase stuff, really. Um, so that's why I keep doing that. But I've renamed that to underscore lowercase t target build. And we're going to make sure that the thing we're hitting is a actually a building. So we're going to make a variable called connected building, and we can set this equal to our hit info dot collider dot game object dot get component in errant because it's the cube that has the slider on it top level object doesn't actually have it's just an empty it doesn't have anything other than the building script on it so we can say get component in errant component we want to get is a building component and I'm going to check to see whether we've found that. So if protected building equal to null, and we can just turn because we haven't actually found building to look at. Um, and then next we want to say if our target building equals, and we want to set target building equal to uh, the detected building. Because we've not already targeted a building, um, and we've just found one, so we can set that as our target. Now, next, we want to check if the detected building not equal to the target building. This is essentially also kind of like saying if the target building wasn't null. We want to check whether that target building is the same building that we're looking at. And what we also want to check if the target building is uh, dot flagged for delete. Because if it is flagged for delete, and this is the old building, and we're looking at a new building, we need to remove that delete flag and swap its material back away from red to its original material. So we can say target building dot remove delete flag. And we can set the target building equal to our detected building. 
So again, we're looking around in the world. If we hit a building, we're going to store it here. If we don't hit one, this will be null, so we can just return early. We want to check if we've already targeted a building, because if we have, we've probably already done something such as flagging it for deletion, etc. And it's probably already changed it. If we don't have a target building, then we've not actually looked at anything before. So this detected building can be our, det our target building. However, if the target building is, is not null, and the detected building isn't the same as the target building, and the target building has been flagged for deletion, then we're obviously we're looking at a different building. So we need to remove the delete flag, and then we can set our target building to detected building. Saying the word building a lot, I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, let me know below, and I can always try and clarify. Now, say, if the detected building equals the target building, and the target building is not equal, uh, is not flagged for delete, then we need to flag the target building for deletion. And we need to pass in our negative material. Flag for delete. Flagged. So target building, flag for delete, and we'll pass in our building material. Finally, if we get through all of this, we can say if a mouse.current was pressed to this frame, then we are going to delete target building dot game object that had destroyed just the building script we to delete the game object that the building script is on and then we can just set target building back to null just to double just to make sure definitely null then we go back round we'll know that we've targeted a building so if we detect a building and the target building is null, which it will be, we can now do the logic to set that building, um, flag it for deletion as well. And over in our build mode logic, we can also check here whether the target building is not null. Because if we're in our build mode, we're no longer in delete mode. We need to remove the flag from that deleted object. So here we'll just say, if the target building is not equal to null, and target building dot flagged for delete. Then we move the target building's delete flag. So remove delete flag and set target build back to null. Because otherwise, if we were targeting a building, then we press Q to go back to build mode. It would leave the target building's material as red which obviously we don't want. So with that done, hopefully this should be fine. Let's go back over to Unity. And this time, get our building and just make a couple of duplicates for it so we can see this working. Hopefully, hopefully it'll work. If not, debug it. So we'll hit play. And you can see over here, we are in place mode. Press Q to go to delete mode. And you can see this is a bit of an issue here. It's not returning it back to its blue material or its original material. So why is that? Also, I'm recording this on the hottest day of the year so far. I am sweating. Just thought I would share that with you. And also sorry if you can hear a fan in the background. Okay, to solve that bug, uh, that was a bit of a stupid mistake on my part. So we're going to return this. So if detected bull, if detected building is equal to null, then we can return early. What we need to do is here, if our mouse uh, button was pressed, originally this was destroying it, and then outside the if statement we would send it to null, kind of at the end of each frame, we were just setting target building to null. We only want to do that if we have destroyed the building. 
So now we're saying if we are hitting something, then do all this. We're not hitting something, and we have a targeted building which is flagged for delete. We need to remove the delete flag and then set it to null. So um, now with those changes in place, if we go back over to Unity and hit play, and we go to delete mode, and we can look here. We've got Look at the object and it goes red, look away, it goes back to material. And we can walk in between these and set the objects to flagged for deletion. And then we can left click and um, delete them from the world. I'm going to get rid of these, which I was using for bugging purposes. Alright, so the last part of this video is getting the grid setting up. So we snap the, uh, when we're positioning the uh, building, we are snapping it to a grid, which we have a good amount of control over. So, to do this, we're going to go back over to Unity. You're going to go back to our build system scripts folder. Right click, create C sharp script, and we just call Let's open up. So here, this isn't going to be a. This is going to be a normal static class, which we can get from anywhere. As such, we don't need a void update start functions. And. Here we are going to make a method. I'm going to call this public static. I'm going to return a vector three. I'm going to say position from world three. Uh, actually called grid position three D. And we can open up some brackets. So this is going to take in a world position. So we can do vector three. Build pos. We can also do a float. This is going to be the scale, uh, grid scale, sorry. So, grid scale. So, this is going to snap all of our dimensions to this grid that we are putting in. So, we just need to do a bit of maps here. So, we're going to say uh, we're going to get an x variable. We're going to set this equal to mathf dot round, and we're going to round our world position dot x equal, uh, divided by the grid scale dot x times. We're going to divide that by grid scale, and then we're going to times it by grid scale. I'm going to duplicate this times, and we're going to do a y, z, and then we can return a new vector 3 of x, z. So what this is going to do, so say if we have a, a world position, and on the x axis we are 20... 254 units away from the world center of 000. And then we've got a grid scale of 3. We can divide by 3. So that's going to be 84.6666 to the nearest integer, which in this case we can go up to 5. So we can do 85 2 times by 3. This will give our grid position on a world grid where the kind of grid snap points are on a scale of 3. This will give us an x position of 255. So that's a nice round number that will conform to our grid scale of 3, no matter what uh, we put into it. So if I go back over... So for example, that was 254. If we do 255 divided by 3, that is 85, which obviously if we times by 3, that's 255. If we do 253 
divided by 3 is 84.3. If we ran that up to 85 times 3, 355. So it's going to snap to the grid when it's in these weird in between points. And eventually we'll go down enough that when we times this up by 3, it'd snap to the next kind of grid point along. With that um, class and need, if we go back over to build tool and we go back over to our build tool script and then here where we're setting the position what we want to do is actually um, we'll create a new um, grid position variable and we'll set this equal to and we can go into our world grid class do grid position world point pass in hit dot point then let's just pass in our grid scale of three um, which is what we were in example, and we can set the transform dot position over to grid position. This is going to be our um, position corrected to our world grid, which we can scale uh, as much as we want. Let's go over to play. Okay. You can see as we're looking around, this is now snapping it to a grid size of three. Place that down. Mm -hmm see that we've got our grid point of three here. There's a few visual bugs. So you can see that as we click our position, it spawns in slightly behind. Ah, okay, that bug there is because when we instantiate it, we're instantiating it at the uh, actual hit info dot point. That's not aligned to the grid object. So let's copy this inside this else statement. And we can use our grid position here instead of the hit info dot point. Drag, go back over to our project and we can hit play. And that should work now. So if we go over to our mode. We can see here it's snapping as we'd expect. And then we can click and it will put it exactly where we are clicking, not where the actual ray was hitting. So that's snapping to a grid. So you can see we are getting there. We can now delete items from the world and place them into the world. So again, there's that visual bug where we leave the material blue when we place it down into the world. Uh, that's gonna be fixed in the next video. Um, and we're gonna work on actually implementing the building prefabs, which look a lot more interesting than these cubes, as, we, as well as implementing the ability to rotate them. So that's gonna be in the next video which is already up and available over on patreon.com forward slash dampos. If you want to head over there, the link is in the description. You'll be able to get the full series and the project files um, on the paid tier of the Patreon. And also for free, you can get the models, uh, which we're going to be using in the next video um, to follow along there. So, um, yeah, the link for that will be in the description. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye. I'd just like to take a minute to thank my amazing patrons, without whom I would not be able to do these kind of long form sort of series. In the 10,000 XP tier, we have John Smart and Trey Briggs, and all of the wonderful 4,000 XP tier members are on screen now. Thanks again for your support.